Hi guys, welcome back to Herky the Cavalier's channel. Today we are doing a Q&A. So we haven't done a Q&A in a while and I'm taking a lovely walk right now so I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to answer some of the questions that you guys ask often. So if you're new here, just a little background on Herky and Milton. They are two Cavalier King Charles sisters. Herky is nine years old and she is turning 10 in May. Milton is seven years old turning eight in July. One question we get asked often is when did we start noticing aging signs in Herky? Last summer when she was nine years old, we started noticing that she was starting to slow down. She started sleeping more. When she slept, she slept more deeply and more often. It was very hard for her to like wake up and when she wakes up, she kind of stumbles a lot. So those that's when we started noticing that she was starting to age. When she's outside, she's still very active and I did do a full video on aging signs for dogs. So I'm going to be linking them up here. What are Herky and Milton's favorite snacks? Honestly, they love just about anything and everything. Herky has never been a picky eater. She will eat everything, including rocks and leaves and whatever she can get her mouth on. Cardboard, whatever it may be. What I like to give her as treats is single ingredient treats. I like to give her fruits and vegetables and she loves those. Milton was a bit of a picky eater at first, but now she eats like everything honestly even fruits and vegetables they always like to stay around oasis when he eats so they always like to catch crumbs they're professional crumb catchers now they also love to eat watermelon in the summer uh, and they love the occasional puppuccino when it's coffee date day with mom i often get asked like how i chose the names and Herky is short for Hercules, although we never ever called her Hercules, it's always been Herky. But it comes from the movie The Nutty Professor, you know that scene where it goes, Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. Oh, Hercules, 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 Hercules. Hercules, Hercules. That's exactly where it's from, I just thought it was funny. We said, oh my god, Hercules, it's gonna be a girl, but it's okay, we're gonna call her Herky. And Herky just stuck. <laughs> As for Milton, um, I just thought it would be a really funny name because it's like an old man's name and I thought it would be funny for a little Blenheim girl. Simple as that. And Herky and Milton, it just it just sounds so familiar. It sounds, it sounds like home. Herky and Milton is home to me. Would I ever get another breed? Uh, the answer is no. Although I find so many breeds are beautiful and amazing, I just think I am a calf mom forever. I've never had a dog before Herky and Milton. Herky was my first and I just knew that she was the perfect dog for me. The breed, all the traits are just so perfect. She is lovable, she is beautiful to me. Cavaliers are the most beautiful dogs out there, period. So no, I would not get another breed of dog. And to me, they're perfect. And I can never see myself with not having a Cavalier. Does that make sense? What are common traits and positive points of Cavaliers? What are the traits of Cavaliers? So Cavaliers are very loving dogs. They love to cuddle. They are the ultimate lap dogs. They were originally bred from King Charles. That were the, that's where the name comes from to warm the laps of royalty. So they are cuddle bugs. As soon as you sit down, as soon as there's a blanket, they will always be on you. I've seen some Cavaliers that love to smuggle you, sit on your face, sit, or sit around your neck. My calves don't do that, but I've seen some that do that. And I'm so jealous, honestly. I wish my dogs would sit on my neck more because it would be like the most comfy thing ever, you know, a Cavalier scarf. But yes, they are very loving dogs, very sweet. They have like the sweetest begging eyes. They are easy to train. I don't think they're personally like the smartest dogs. I, I know a lot of other breeds that are smarter to learn, but they are eager to learn. They are very food driven for the most part. So they like food rewards. They love to learn new tricks. They are highly adaptable, which is something I love. They can live in small apartments. They can live in houses. They can live in the city. They can live in the countryside. Mine love snow. They also love the beach. So I love that they're highly adaptable and they are small enough to be able to travel with. So for all those reasons and for the fact that they look so stinking cute, Cavaliers, for me, are the perfect breed. By the way, I'm so sorry. I'm like walking outside right now. It's 28 Celsius and it's humid. It's in Florida and I'm starting to get 
like a sweat stash, so I apologize. Cons of owning Cavaliers. Okay, there's no breed of dog that is perfect. You're just gonna find some pros and cons to every breed, but here are the cons for Cavaliers. They are dogs that shed, so they are not hypoallergenic. If you are allergic to dogs, maybe Cavaliers are not the best, so they do shed. They do require quite a bit of maintenance because of the long fur, and it's not fur that like repels dirt and snow and all that. It is fur that attracts dust, that attracts snow. It's very, um, sticky things to their fur. I call them Swiffer dusters, so they collect everything. And for that reason, and with the long hair, they do require a bit of more maintenance. Uh, another con is that they are predisposed to genetic diseases. I'm going to link more information on that, but Cavaliers are prone to heart disease, um, mitral valve disease, they're prone to syring syringomyelia, they're prone to certain eye diseases, they're prone to ear infections, and the list goes on. So there's a few things that you should look out for. If you get a dog from a reputable breeder that does the proper genetic testing that should lower your chances of these lovely dogs having these diseases my two cavaliers don't have syringomyelia herky is almost 10 years old and she is heart clear nothing going on with her heart and i'm so happy about that milton is seven years old she was diagnosed with a heart murmur a stage two it's still manageable without uh, medication so right now we are just managing her weight keeping her at a healthy weight we're giving her some heart supplements coenzyme q10 and we are doing some regular follow-ups at the vet but it is still no medication for milton and what's the last con that i can say they are very loving and clingy to their humans so they tend to have separation anxiety if you are away from home a lot it might be a problem for them they are very they can be very anxious dogs and get anxious behavior but again they are adaptable so it could also be okay for them does that make sense? Okay, about puppy teething. What helps with puppy teething? First of all, I would like to mention that puppy teething is completely normal behavior. And this is the way that puppies discover the world and communicate. Everything is through the mouth. They don't talk. And it's through like the, the mouth and the teeth that they can discover textures and get to discover their world and know everything. So puppy teething is completely normal. And with time, it will go away. Eventually, they will stop biting on everything. But in the moment, I know it can be very frustrating. Like Herky, she used to chew my walls. She used to chew all my sandals. She chewed my Invisalign retainer. That's the most expensive thing that she's chewed. And my teeth have been crooked ever since because I have no more Invisalign. It's Herky's fault. Even though it's normal and it can be annoying, what you want to do is divert the puppy's attention to something that they can chew on. So let's say they are chewing on something you don't want to, divert their attention to a chew toy, a plush, their blanket, something that they are allowed to chew. Um, you just want to divert attention. Don't try to not scold the puppy. That's not the best behavior for the puppies because they don't understand. So just like gentle parenting, this is like gentle parenting for dogs. Does that make sense? But I'm going to link some of our favorite toys that we use for Herc and Milton. Although it's been almost 10 and 8 years. 8 years that I haven't done anything puppy. So things have probably changed. But from my experience, this is, this is what had worked before. You should have a variety of toys that differ in textures and sizes and in, in forms. So that the puppy can learn to chew on things that they're allowed to. You can have little chewing toys. But be careful not to have anything that's too hard because puppy fractures are real. I've had dog fractures with both Herky and Milton and it is costly, you guys. So just be careful that it's not too hard. All those Nyla bone things are too hard. I know everything that's durable and long lasting. I know you want to try to save some money, but it's too hard. It's going to break your puppy's teeth. I don't get Herky and Milton groomed at the salon. I've only done it twice for Herky in her entire lifetime and once for Milton. First of all, my Cavaliers aren't extremely hairy. There's some Cavaliers that have beautiful genetics and that have such long, beautiful hair, but Herky and Milton's hair is just manageable. So I had two bad experiences with Herky. So from those, I will never again bring her to a groomer. First experience, they just had cut her in a way that made her look so big. I wasn't really, I really wasn't happy with that. And then the second time was when she went with Milton. When I picked them up, they were both shaking in their cage and they were so traumatized and so anxious. I was like, you know what? This is not worth it. So I started grooming them at home by myself. I don't do it often because again, their fur is pretty manageable. Uh, so I do their baths at home. I do their nail cutting, ear cleaning, everything at home. If you want new videos on grooming, teeth, nails, ears, let me know. I can make new ones, although my old ones are still just as valid, but I could make new ones if you want. 
and so I trim their hair myself. I trim their little paws myself. I trim just whatever by myself, but they are overall, they are pretty natural in the length and in the cut of their hair. The girls, I give them a combination of three things, coenzyme Q10 for the heart. This is just a, a human supplement that I give them both every day. I give them fish oil. This can be either human or it can be for dog directly. And I give them joint chews for their luxating patella. They have been on this for years. I feel like it's managed their luxating patella well. It hasn't really progressed. They are still asymptomatic. They don't limp. They don't show pain. So it's been a few years that we are managed only through a gentle exercise and joint chews. Perky and Milton's relationship with Oasis has definitely evolved over time. Milton was super obsessed with him at first when we first brought him home. I feel like she was curious about the puppy, uh, the puppy, the baby, and she was just like around all the time. And then as he grew, she kind of got like more distance. But now that he's a toddler, he's like very uh, physical. He loves to catch things and he he's very vocal he's very rough he's a toddler just learning to live his life and just learning to be a human so it has been a bit hard to control him around the girls because he's literally like double perky size even now he's very heavy he's definitely like he's like a 30 pound like psychopath on two legs so it's really hard to uh, manage his force around the girls. We often have to keep them separated because they enable each other to be like really intense. So around mealtime especially, I really try to keep them separated. But they're really cute. He is obsessed with them. He loves to be around them all the time. It's just that he can be kind of intense with them. So we try, especially with Herky being a aging and with uh, their fragile joints, we try to have him be very careful around them. So I, when he gets too excited, we try to keep them apart. And he enables Milton so much that she is very, very barky around him. So it can be very annoying. So Herky and Milton have been on Raw for uh, most of their life at this point. And I feel like this has been a big contribution to how lean and how healthy they are overall. I am not a pet nutritionist. I'm not a vet, but I do see a difference in Herkin Milton's health overall and they've never looked better. I feel like they look great and they are in great health for their age. So I think a big contribution to that is their diet and they have been on raw food most of their life. We do believe that minimally processed, biologically appropriate food is the way to go. So they eat raw food that is frozen and it's all pre-balanced meals. Our go-to is Big Country Raw when we're in Canada. We just love them so much. It's not as expensive as you think. It costs less than $100 per month for both Herc and Milton. So I can leave more information on raw but a lot of exercise and healthy food is the way to go. If you look at kibble and all that other food, you can see how many ingredients that are unnecessary, in my opinion, are in that food. So I just felt, as a dog mom, I felt more comfortable giving them food that there's basically just five ingredients in that food. There's raw meat, organs, bones, all crushed up with fruits and veggies, minerals, and it's good to go. I was very much more comfortable with that. And I feel like it's made the biggest difference in my girl's health. Okay guys, hope you enjoyed coming along this walking Q&A with us. If you have questions, leave them in the description box below. Hope you had fun with us. If you have suggestions of what you want to see next, I'm talking to you by the shadow. If you have suggestions of what you want to see next, leave them in the comments below and we will take note of all that content. We love you guys. We'll see you soon. Mary Milton, say bye. Bye bye.